This video will explain the procedure for executing bulk earthwork and backfilling activities in substation construction projects. We will cover the following contents in this procedure. Purpose and scope. Roles of site earthwork team. Area planning for earthworks. Material selection and testing. Backfilling procedure. Records of backfilling layers. The purpose of this procedure is to explain the process of earthwork planning, team responsibilities, material testing, and related records for earthworks execution. And scope will cover bulk earthwork activities in an electrical substation project. This procedure should be adopted to achieve the required compaction of the backfilled material to avoid soil settlement after handing over the project and to find the root cause quickly in case of earthwork settlement the earthwork team will have the following roles and responsibility to effectively execute the backfilling and compaction activities at project project manager will form a site earthwork team ensure effective coordination with engineering to develop topography drawings and if possible 3d plan of the area lead this team for area planning to divide into smaller portions site manager will input for area planning coordinate with surveyor and subcontractor and will complete the work under his responsibility surveyor will do the site topography prepare and maintain level sheets of each layers as per areas and make temporary benchmarks subcontractor will input to help the team marking the areas based on his material supply and equipment arrangements. QC engineer will contribute for area division into smaller portions, keeping in view the RFI requirements. Maintain the layer wise area plan for each layer. Coordinate with lab for FDT and soil testing. Communication with client and consultant engineers for timely inspection. Design engineer will convert the topography and levels from surveyor and prepare the layout drawing showing the areas agreed by this team after project is awarded project manager will coordinate with engineering to get plot area of project site on the coordinates given by client and will make a site earthwork team PM and this team will visit the site with an approved layout of the area and decide the division of site area into portions based on the construction requirements and topography. This team will consist of site manager, surveyor, subcontractor, QC engineer and design engineer as minimum while project manager will lead this team. Project manager and this team will make a detailed site visit with an approved layout of the area and decide the division of site area into smaller portions. They will decide it based on the construction requirements and topography of the area. Further this team will take input from the subcontractor for dividing the area. The actual site area may be divided into as many smaller portions as needed to easily execute and control the earthworks activity on site. After site visit, design engineer will prepare 3D area plan, if possible, reflecting the topographic details of existing ground conditions. This will help to visualize the fill and cut areas prior to start of work. Based on the decision of project team, design engineer will issue an area plan showing the areas marked with their respective numbering. He will also prepare a cross-sectional drawing of the area, that will indicate the required number of backfilling layers to reach the finish level. Layer numbering shall be marked on this drawing in advance. At this stage, earthwork team is fully aware of the layers required to backfill. In some areas, there may require less number of layers to reach the required level, compared to other areas which may be due to site topography. For example, if you look at these four areas, the highlighted colors show that the first backfill layer, is only occupying the small portions from them, which is due to high levels in the other portions of those areas. Second layer will cover some more area of those portions, while third will spread further than second and so on. And when, the level reaches to seventh layer, the backfill soil will spread to all smaller portions equally, and this next layer, will have the same level, all across the substation. Now, the next layers coming above, 
will also have the same levels across all smaller areas, no matter if we backfill them simultaneously, or in parts. Beside area planning activity, project manager will hire an approved independent lab, for material selection and testing. This lab will investigate the existing ground, and recommend a type of material to be backfilled. If required, boreholes tests will be done to analyze the soil characteristics and classification. Based on the laboratory geotechnical report, material source will be selected. Get approval from consultant and client if required as per contract. Modified proctor test is performed on the soil samples collected from source, in laboratory. So that maximum dry density, and optimum moisture contents values of the soil can be found. These values are needed to compare the compaction results of field density test. Material sample must be collected in the presence of site manager, site engineer, QC engineer, and representatives from client and consultants. Lab reports will be submitted to client and consultant for approval. Once approval is done only then material can be transported to site for backfilling purpose. If the material source is changed during the course of backfilling, sampling and testing process will be repeated in the laboratory, on the samples from the new source to ensure, if this source is complying with the type of soil, required as per geotechnical report. If the material is transported from the same source, an FDT test may be found some variations in Troxler reading like very less or more than the lab density, then soil samples will again be collected from site in the presence all representatives, for soil classification in the laboratory. To ensure if the soil is in compliance with the requirements. Site manager will work closely with earthwork subcontractor to supervise the backfilling process. Before bringing the approved fill material to site, subcontractor will do the site grubbing, removal of herbs, clearing vegetation, and will do compaction and testing of natural ground. After site clearance and compaction, he will start bringing the fill material, for first layer in area A1, then area A2, A3, and A4, until first layer is completely backfilled in all its smaller portions. QC and site engineers will keep checking the transported material. It shall be rejected and removed from site if big boulders are found during visual inspection. Or if material is different than the approved material. Subcontractor will spread the fill material in thickness of 30 cm loose fill as per PTS. Sufficient water must be sprinkled to achieve the required water contents in the soil. The required compaction must be achieved using heavy mechanical rollers. Backfilling shall be done well beyond the boundary line and smooth slopes must be maintained at the edge of layer. When, layer is well compacted to its desired level, and visually found acceptable then site engineer, will ask the QC engineer, for RFI submission. Now QC engineer will submit the RFI and call client and consultant engineers, for witnessing the FDT test. If the FDT tests are approved, the subcontractor can start filling the next layer. Troxler nuclear test is carried out for checking the field dry density of soil. Compaction readings of field density test are recorded by lab technician on a field test sheet, which is to be signed off by engineers, who witness the tests. The following process is involved, when using the Troxler apparatus for FDT. Mark the location of test. Insert the rod into soil. Fix the Troxler apparatus and stay 5 to 10 meters away from it. This machine will emit the radiation into compacted soil, and the resistance or, obstruction, to penetrate radiation into soil, is computed as compaction values on the screen, after the test is done. The same process will be repeated for each area of respective layers, until all layers are backfilled and approved. This is how, layer-wise backfilling can be executed from ground level to required finish level. In this way, a systematic approach is adopted to execute a bulk earth work, under substation area. Work executed with this procedure, will further facilitate in traceability of RFIs and test record, easily whenever required. The following documents and records should be maintained for this activity. Maintaining layer-wise area plans. 
The number of layers required to reach the sub-base level is already defined, in the area cross-section drawing prepared by design engineer, after area planning was done in the start. QC engineer will write the following details of RFI, in a box inside the respective area on that layer plan, for that RFI has raised. Maintaining RFI records. All RFIs related to each layer and area must be maintained, and should easily be traceable at any time when needed or in case to review the results of underneath layers. Each RFI should include the following documents, RFI form, duly signed. Level sheet, must be signed by surveyor. Checklist, to be signed by QC engineer. Field density test sheet, for recording the readings of all tests at site. Lab FDT report. Attach it to RFI when lab will send the respective layer report. Proctor test, attach lab letter showing the proctor test values for the material filled in this layer. Material approval letter, attached to RFI to ensure if backfilled material in this area is approved. Subcontractor approval, it will confirm, if the subcontractor is approved by client. Photos, attach or save all the photos in soft form those are taken during the backing and testing of this respective layer. Scan RFIs and layout plans. When one layer is completed then scan its full layout plan together with RFIs of all the areas coming in this layer. Repeat the same for all other layers until all backfilling is completed. Save and archive these soft files for future reference when required. The following documents may be referred regarding this activity. Inspection and Test Plan ITP. Quality Control Procedure for Identification and Traceability Checklist and Civil SOP 1 Latest Revision of IFC Drawings Project Technical Specifications Sand Cone Test as per ASTM D1556 Nuclear densimeter as per ASTM D2922 and ASTM D3017 for water content. Soil classification according to ASTM D2487. Field density according to ASTM D1556 or D2167. Thank you for watching. We hope this work methodology will be useful at site.